Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and this is the first of three videos we're going to be doing about compositing, creating transparency in different ways in Final Cut Pro 10 to create this kind of layered effects. So the first is going to be this text effect where we kind of slice the text into. Uh, the second is going to be looking at how we work with the Cineflare Gradients tool, and then also looking at how we kind of create this sliced up style image in Final Cut Pro 10. And in the third of these three videos, we're going to be having a look at how we use hand-drawn marks. That could be something drawn with a Sharpie or with another type of marker or paintbrush and use that to composite in our video timeline. So essentially, we're able to create transparency where we have color or where we don't have color and the kind of reverse as well. So we're we'll playing around with that in the third of these three videos. Now, all three of these videos are sponsored by FX Factory. Um, we're going to be focusing a lot on the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro 10, but we're also going to be having a look at the Cineflare gradient effect that we can use to kind of accentuate some of these effects that we're working with here. And definitely in the second of these two videos, we're going to be really focused on how we can create these very kind of cool disjointed effects in conjunction with things like the Draw Mask tool. So we're going to start with the sliced up titles in Final Cut Pro 10. So we're going to start with a completely blank timeline here and then kind of add in uh, different layers and effects that we need. Before we do anything else, we're gonna to go to Window, Workspaces, and reset the default layout, just so that I know that everyone is looking at the same Final Cut Pro 10 layout as me. And then we are gonna jump up to the top left to our Type Tools, to our Titles Tools, and we're coming down to the Bumper and Opener Titles, where we're gonna find our basic title. So this title is a good starting point if you're looking to create titles and designs from scratch. We'll drag this down to the timeline and we'll stretch this out a little bit. And I'm just gonna do Shift and Z to zoom to my entire timeline. So I'm gonna just type in some text here. We'll come up to the type at the top right, and we'll type in sliced. And then we are gonna come up to our type options up at the top here, and we're gonna to come to our 2D styles and the bold titles. If we have a look on the right-hand side here, we can double click at the top here to kind of see a bit more of our inspector up at the top right. If you still don't see the inspector, just go to window, show in workspace, and make sure you have the inspector selected. And we're gonna increase the size of this type nice and big. And we can move this around as well, kind of position it uh, somewhat centrally. And then we're gonna come into our effects. So actually, we're gonna double click at the top here again, just to minimize this. And we're gonna come into our effects on the right-hand side here. So what I'm looking for in my effects, I'm coming to my video and audio effects, and scrolling down to masks. And in the masks, I'm gonna find the, the draw mask tool. And this is a real super simple technique to create the kind of start of this effect. We're gonna drag the draw mask on, and you'll see you'll get this message to add a control point. Now, the only time you might not see this is if you've got your transform options selected. So you just wanna make sure that's turned off, and you should see this click to add a control point. And now we can just click four times. So one, two, three, four, and five times back to the beginning, and that will slice up our title. So basically we've got the bottom half of our title here. So let's give our text a color here. So we'll just double click here, and we'll come down a little bit to the face, which will allow us to change the color. And we'll pick kind of yellow color here. And then basically what we're gonna do is duplicate this layer and then kind of invert the mask that we've created. So I'm gonna to come to my timeline, hold down the Alt or Option key, and just drag up and you should see a little green plus next to the layer you're duplicating. We can drop that there. And now super simply, um, we can just come up to our viewer here and we can drag up the bottom points to the top. And basically because we've left these two middle points in the same spot, we've got kind of two halves to our type now. So if I come to my face color now, we'll jump in here and we'll select a sort of magenta color you can see we've sliced that title in half. So and we don't wanna move these points now if we wanna kind of keep that title sliced in half perfectly. And in fact, what we wanna do is come to our video options up here at the top right and just click away from the draw mask so we kind of remove those draw mask options there. If we do need to adjust the draw mask, we can highlight it again and modify the slices here. Uh, one thing you can do is just kind of pull one of these and it will create a nice slice into your text We'll just undo that with Command and Z. Uh, but we don't want that for this one. What we're actually gonna do is just kind of do a little bit of a slide in animation here. So I am gonna play this through and I wanna offset these two titles so they're not next to one another. So I'm gonna have the top half of this kind of slide up to the right and the bottom half kind of slide a little bit down to the left. So I'm gonna come ahead in time somewhere around about here. I'm gonna highlight my bottom clip 
And again, just make sure I've deselected that draw mask. And I'm gonna use the, the transform tools here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a keyframe. And so this first keyframe that I've added here is kind of holding it in its central position, so where it is aligned. So now that we've got our first keyframe added, we just wanna move back in time just a little bit. I'm not too worried about the timing of things, we can always adjust that a little bit later. And once I've moved back in time, because I've already added a keyframe, when I make a movement here now, just slide this down to the left a little bit. Oh, let's get it to kind of line up here. So you can see now when I move between those two, it's kind of slicing into place. So we get this nice kind of movement and it pops right into the right spot there. So this is what we have when we play back. And it's a little bit slow. So I'm gonna right click here and show my video animation and then just move these a tiny bit closer to one another and you'll see we get a nice little snap of those two titles. So we'll close down the video animation for this layer. We'll select our topmost layer. And actually I'm gonna keep the bottom layer selected for the moment. And what I wanna do is make sure I'm on the keyframe that I first set for this one. This is in the middle. So I'm using my keyframe navigation tools in the inspector here. I can do the same thing up here in the viewer as well. So it's important to make sure you move between those keyframes because you don't wanna add lots of extra keyframes. So this is the beginning of my animation and this is the end of my animation. I wanna select my top layer at the end of my animation so that these finish and snap into position at exactly the same time. So I'm gonna to come to my position for my top layer, add a keyframe, come back a little, and then just drag this one up to the right. I think I'm gonna get the S and the L to kind of line up here. It sort of makes a nice little typographical thing there. And actually these have lined up fairly decently just by eyeballing it. So now you can see when I move forward, those slice or slide into place really nicely. So that is how we create this sliced up type. Now I've done a couple of other things in the other examples that I gave and we will just have a look at a couple of things we can do here in the compositing that we're doing. So I'm just going to let this play forwards a little bit and then we'll pause this and I'm going to grab my blade tool and we're just going to slice both of these at this point and then come back to the selection tool. You always want to jump straight back to the selection tool after you've worked with the blade tool things can go really wrong otherwise. So what I wanna do is I wanna put um, some texture into this sliced image, and I'm gonna use um, some of the images that I've imported into this project. So these images, these drawings we're gonna use in a few of these different projects are basically these really rough sketches um, using a dry marker. What's nice about these, they've got nice little bits of texture because the pens are running out, so you've got this kind of bits of white all through this. So we'll grab one of these, grab this one. We're gonna drag it down to our timeline, and I'm gonna stretch it out. I'm gonna do a couple of things when I first drop this down to the timeline. The first is I'm gonna to come to my inspector and turn off the fitting and change that to none. You'll see the drawing is in fact way bigger than the kind of HD edit that we're working with. So I'm gonna just drop down the opacity so I can see this. And basically I wanna get some of this texture into the top of this sliced image. So we're gonna grab our transform options. We'll move this across here, and I'm just gonna rotate it. Not worried about these edges, they're gonna disappear in a minute. I'm just gonna let some of that texture sit in this area here, okay? So that's all good. I'm gonna bring my opacity back up, and then I'm gonna bring this basic title, top half, back up to the top. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna come into our inspector, into the video options, and we're coming into this compositing area here. We're gonna to come to the blend mode where it says normal here, and we're gonna drop down to stencil alpha. And that is basically gonna put that texture right inside uh, that text, which is great. So the only problem is here, um, if we just highlight these two clips and press V, is that we've lost that bottom half of our image. So when we're compositing things like this and using some of the blend modes, we actually need to then wrap these two clips up in a compound clip. So I'm gonna right click here and create a new compound clip. Shortcut is Alt or Option and G. And we'll just leave it at the default name. So now you can see we've wrapped that into a compound clip and we have those two clips nicely lined up here. So we get a bit of texture in there. If we double click into here, we can still add 
effects um, into here as well. So basically I can change the effects on this drawing. So as an example, we can come to our effects here and we might scroll down to stylize. We'll find bad TV. And if we drop this onto this drawing, you'll see we get the bad TV now nicely kind of flickering that text. So if we come back here, you can see we get this little bit of nice flicker and texture in there. It's not rendered out, which is why it's a little bit blurry when it's playing back. So let's grab another image. We'll grab this first one here and we'll drop this down above our basic title. Turn off these options, so no fitting. I'm gonna move this and rotate it. So we've got a similar texture, but just a slightly different part of that image. If we drop down the opacity, we can, we can make sure it's covering that bottom half of the text. So we'll bring the opacity back up. I am gonna do a little bit of juggling here. So this basic title now, if we move that, it's gonna move everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Alt, Command and Up, and that's gonna lift my base layer above the main timeline. And I'm gonna grab my position tool and I'm gonna drop this down to the main timeline. So we can use the position tool to move things without bumping the main timeline. And we can use that Alt command on the up arrow to kind of lift a clip from the main storyline. So now with this layer, I can, now with this layer, I'm just gonna jump back to my selection tool. With this layer, I can come up to my stencil alpha and that will place the second bit of that texture into the bottom half of my type here. So now if I select these two, do Alt or Option and G, it's gonna make a compound clip. And now we have a compound clip, we can jump in there. We can add in some effects. So let's scroll down here and we'll go for projector. We'll drop that onto that background there. I'm gonna come up to our inspector and just go to the color correction options and we're gonna twist the color here a little bit. So we'll just flip it across to the right there and maybe we'll tweak the color here a little bit so it's a little different from that topmost layer. So I'm gonna come back here. So you can see we've got these two options here with the text that's now kind of flickering from these two effects. So we've placed images within that type and kind of split it up, but we could place anything uh, within there. And actually if we use some of these projector effects on the layers now, we get this nice effect where the, the layers kind of will get pulled apart a little bit. So again, these two bits type are separate. We can move them apart and we can kind of add any color effects that we want to the, the kind of different layers that we have there. So let's just have a look at one last thing here. So I'm gonna create a new piece of sliced up uh, type here. So we just come to our type again, we'll come to our basic title and we'll just type something new into this one. And in this layer, I'm gonna change this to bold. Again, I'm gonna increase this nice and large. And we'll do the same technique here. So we'll grab our masks. I'm gonna grab the draw mask and we'll just cut right across the middle here for this one. And before we duplicate this, we wanna add this next effect because our type might move around a little bit and we don't wanna do that before we apply this next effect. So we're gonna use the Cineflare gradient here in our effects, the gradient for titles. I'm gonna drop this in here. And basically what this allows us to do is to put gradients within our text here. So if I highlight my clip, and you can see here we've got these kind of gradient options here. I'm gonna hide my draw mask. And in fact, for the moment, I'm just gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn off the outline for this and what I wanna do is kind of give a sort of nice shadow um, in part of this gradient. Now, one thing that does happen is when you're working with type, there's actually a little bit of a fight between this tool and this tool to kind of center things. So I'm actually gonna move the type away from the center for a moment. And then we'll come back across to our Cineflare gradient tools and I'm gonna to just view the gradient palette. And basically I wanna tweak this a little bit. Now I've been playing around with this and I've figured out that for this effect, I want my start fade to be 960 and my end fade to be 960. 
So these two bits in the middle, and you can see this is now making the gradient kind of roll up the middle really nicely. And then I'm going to bring this a little closer to zero, and this a little closer to zero as well. So you can see we're bringing that somewhere around the middle. So basically we've got now this gradient right in the middle here. So now that we've got that, we want to kind of create one darker part of this gradient and one lighter part of the gradient. You can see we can kind of move where it sits here. So essentially for the yellow parts of this gradient, I'm actually going to add in some black here. And we'll go for an orange. And then we're going to come for a yellow for these last two. So now, basically, if I turn my gradient palette off again, you can see now I've kind of got this gradient there, and I've got this kind of darker area of the gradient as well. And we actually want this darker area of the gradient to be closer to the middle here. So I'm just going to pull that down. We want this to be somewhere around about here. So I'm going to snap this to the middle. And we're going to sit this around about here for this first layer. And then if I hold down the Alt key and duplicate this up, I can turn my draw mask back on here. Nothing will happen because we've still got the two layers. But on my second layer, if I turn my draw mask on, we're going to bring these points up to the top. Actually, I need to redo this. So I just need to make sure that my draw mask is halfway between my type there. So somewhere around about here. I'm going to click away from the draw mask here and back to the gradient tiles. And we want to make sure that this darker area of the gradient is kind of hiding the top of this text. And we'll see why that is in a minute. So now we've got the, the draw mask in there. I just need to push that up a little bit. Okay, perfect. So we've got our draw mask kind of slicing across this. We'll put it at a little bit of an angle here. And now I'm going to duplicate this layer. Now with this setup, I'm on the draw mask for the second layer. If I drag these up and then come down to my gradient for the tiles and move this up, you can see we get this kind of very cool slice between those two pieces of text. So it's a little bit fiddly to set up, but actually it works really nicely once you do get it there. So we kind of get this opening up of these, whoops, opening up of these two uh, bits of type and we can kind of control where the gradient sits there. And it's kind of key for this to kind of get that gradient in exactly the right spot to, to kind of make this work. So let's just click away from everything here and we'll just have a look at what we've got here. So we've kind of set up our type layers so they join back together. We've sliced up our type and put kind of graphic content within there and obviously we can play around with that and get these moving and stuff like that as well. And then we have put these two gradients into this slice layers. So these are some good examples of where slicing up your layers can give this kind of really nice effect. So I definitely recommend checking out the Cineflare gradient tool, but it's not essential uh, for this particular tutorial. There are other kind of color corrections and stuff like that. As we've seen, we can put in images or video into our type as well. We can add effects in different spots in our layers and our compound clips to play around with these effects as we kind of learn more about Final Cut Pro 10. One thing I would mention is that with these compound clips and kind of adding lots of layers in, you can end up in a render hole sometimes where suddenly you've got just so many compound clips and so many layers and so many effects that things just don't seem to render anymore. So just be mindful of that depending on the power of your machine and that type of thing. Uh, but hopefully this tutorial has been useful. In the second of these two tutorials, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the Cineflare gradient tool. And in the last one, we're going to be looking at these kind of hand-drawn sketches and how we can use those to create transparency and compositing in our videos as well. That's going to be a really exciting one to work through. So I hope you found that useful. Definitely leave any comments or questions and maybe a thumbs up below if you've liked this tutorial. Um, but let's dive in and have a look at how we work with the Cineflare gradient tool and some of these techniques for compositing layers together in Final Cut Pro 10.